City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and some spin, and put the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Oh, welcome back. Welcome to my next project. And I know it is getting into spring, but I'm just going to do one more jacket and then we'll call it good for the colder weather. And this is more of a going into spring jacket. It is unlined, it is not insulated. It's gonna be this one. And the basically the only options are, um, this one has for some reason just one sleeve of a different color. This one has both sleeves of a different color. I, I'm not really a fan of just one sleeve. I, th I know what my husband would say. My husband would say, what did you run out of fabric? That's what he would say. I did that once. I painted a one wall a different color. I'm like, it's a focal wall. He says, it looks like you ran out of paint. So anyway, not doing this one. I'm gonna be doing this one. And what I'm gonna be making it out of is a tapestry. I got a whole bunch of home deck fabrics. And I think I have enough of this. It's like earth tones, you know, it feels like a cotton tapestry fabric. And that is gonna be the main part. And then the top shoulders and sleeves, I'm going to be doing out of just a, um, it's a cotton velveteen, but it's a tone that should coordinate with it, okay? So I'm gonna have a lot of texture going on. I'll have the tapestry front and back and the shoulder and sleeves in the velveteen. I think that'll be fun. So anyhow, it looks like this also has pockets down here. Love our pockets on jackets. And it's made, it's supposed to be where you can wear it as a jacket or a dress. I don't think I'll be wearing it as a dress, but it's nice to know that it's long enough that it'll have that option. It looks like it's gonna come to just above my knees, so that's fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the tissue paper and see what I come up with. So this is how observant I am. I just grab this and I'm cutting it out and actually I've got everything cut out but the pockets. And I'm looking at this pocket piece and it's kind of unusual because it has a grain line on the bias and one on the straight. And I was trying to figure that out and then I saw it for moderate stretch fabrics only. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, this entire pattern is supposed to be for medium weight, moderate stretch knit fabrics, which obviously I am not using, but it's cut out now, so I'm gonna go with it. So we're just gonna see exactly how much ease is built into this thing. It's a jacket, you know? I think that if I was using a knit, yeah, it would be more drapey, but I wasn't going into this thinking it was gonna be a drapey dress, more like a jacket to throw over jeans and stuff, so. I'm just gonna keep on going, but yeah, technically it's supposed to be for moderate stretch knits. I really should have paid attention to that. But that takes me back to this pocket piece and they want you to cut one on the straight of fabric and one at the angle. And I'm looking at this and they're placed in the same position. This all pattern also has the option of a side pocket. So this one does have pockets, it's just on the, on the seam line. And so I might just go with this one, with the pockets in the seam line instead of these patch pockets because um, I really like the look of my tapestry and I don't want those clogging it up in the front. So we're gonna go with these sleeves and I'm cutting the collar out of the same fabric, the stuff that I'm using for my sleeves and I'm gonna go with the inseam uh, pockets. 
So I want to show you the machine that I'm going to be using for today's project. This is one that I rebuilt about a month ago and I have named him Vincent after Vincent Van Gogh um, because that's the fabric I used to cover the case. Now this is a Singer 128 clone which means it uses the design pretty much of a three-quarter size Singer 128 but made in Japan, probably in the 50s or 60s, don't know exactly. Um, so it's a more modern make of a very vintage machine, which is really cool. So this is the one I'm going to be using, and it is a shuttle machine. So if you're not familiar with it, I'll show you that later when I have two hands. Um, it, instead of a round bobbin, it has a shuttle that goes back and forth. And so it's going to be quite a chore to see how he does with the upholstery fabric. But I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be good. So just wanted to introduce you to him. Okay, so starting off, their first thing is about uh, fusing interfacing to the collar and facing pieces. And I'm going to be skipping that. My fabric is so dense and everything that... Um, I just don't feel like I need that. If I was using a lighter weight fabric, yes, I would definitely be fusing on my interfacing. And since I'm doing the inseam pockets, I'm skipping this. And um, which is going to take us, this step is just sewing the square pocket onto the front. So it takes us down to the sleeve. So there's a dart to be made in the sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and get those pieces up here. So it's a very unusually shaped sleeve pattern because it does go all the way up on the shoulders. Um, and at the widest point here, for the size I'm cutting out, it says it's a 23 inch width, which should be more than enough because it's very wide. So at this point, I need to make sure I'm marking this on the wrong side of the fabric, but I need to punch out my dots. Um, let me go ahead and unpin this really quick because I have it pinned so the right side is exposed and I don't want to to draw on that but actually before I take it off too much I'm going to have to clip my notches and this has three notches in this center back which is unusual to me but we'll go with it so there's three notches here two here one on each side and one here. So this side that has the two notches, that is going to be sewn onto the back. Um, and the side that has one notch gets sewn onto the front. Now for marking uh, my dart, they have a dot at the very bottom. I'm punching out and then up here towards the top, these little marks here are for my secondary dots. Okay, so I'm gonna get those punched out, get my fabric piece over here and put it so it's right side up. Place my pattern on top of it. And then I can just reach through those holes I, pre I punched out with my heat erasable pen. There it goes, it didn't wanna draw for a second and draw in my three dots. Then I can just get my ruler and connect those dots so that I can go ahead and pin them. So to pin my dart, what I'm gonna do is put a pin down in the first dot, back up in the second dot. Okay, pushing that together and pinching up here at the top of the dart. Stick a pin where that point of the dart is there. Tuck this one in here. If this dart was a little bit longer, I would probably put a pin in the middle. But that's not that necessary here. And since I have the, my line drawn on both sides, this is the way I'm gonna be sewing it. I start at this outside edge and I'm just gonna come all the way out. Okay, so this is the shuttle system here. Instead of a bobbin, you have this little rocket ship. You push this as the ejector it comes out, then there's a little spool of thread inside, which is the bobbin. And uh, when I run out of thread, because I'm sure I will, I'll show you how all that works. So anyway, let me slide this plate black closed here and get started. Okay. 
and just go straight off the edge. And I leave a fairly long tail. Okay, so you can see, makes lovely stitches, front and back. I'm gonna go ahead, make a big loop with my tail here. Stick a pin in the very bottom of my dart through that loop and pull it to cinch up and tie it off. Okay, so I can clip this and up here. Now, this is a cotton velveteen. So it will unravel, not as bad as some, but it will unravel. So after I press this dart the appropriate way, I have to look at the directions, probably this way, but I need to go check. Um, I will be surging around each of these pieces just on the very edge, just to make sure that everything is gonna stay nice and neat, especially because these seam allowances are going to be exposed. Ran out of bobbin, so I thought I would show you the old bobbin winder in action. So the way that you do this, you want to have enough thread coming off of your bobbin that, oh, I don't know, maybe about eight inches or so. And there's a little slot right here underneath this spring and I'm putting it in so my thread is wrapping counterclockwise. And I'm just gonna drop it in there and put my finger on top of it like that to keep that little spool from turning and pull the thread down this slot. And at the very bottom, if you pull it back up, I don't know if you can see, it goes over another little finger of metal down there. Okay, and so now if I pull this, the little shuttle inside will turn and all is well. So now I can just put this back into the machine. So I'm gonna make sure that my little, put my clutch back in, my little carrier is all the way forward, okay? And just set this in and that is it. And then when you go to take it out, you just push this little button and that's like an ejector that pops it out. Okay, so with that, I'm just gonna push this little slide plate closed. Um, it'll, this is loose enough that it'll still be able to pick it up as it goes. I'm gonna re-thread my little machine here and I'll be right back. Okay, so on the instructions uh, where this is my big sleeve, this is the lower part, this is the armhole part, this is the neckline area. The instructions want you to stay stitch on both sides of this armhole part. I'm using my uh, woven stay tape. There you go. My so easy woven stay tape. Um, I think that that will work well. So basically it's fusible. It's very lightweight. I'm trying not to use my steam because it will steam up my iron, but trust me, when I turn the camera off, I will be using steam to iron this on. But you can just kind of curve it over. It's, it's very lightweight, but it is woven on the straight, so it does do what it's supposed to do to retain that shape. So let me go ahead and hit the steam and do this to the other sleeve. So we're gonna be sewing the top part of this interestingly shaped sleeve together to make the center back. So this is one of the places I put my stay tape. This is the dart, you know, we have our neckline here. So I'm just gonna put these two together, sew them at five eighths of an inch, and then press this seam allowance open here. Now the instructions say after you sew it, um, that they want you to trim the seam allowance to three eighths of an inch. I have no idea why, but you know, we're gonna go with it. So basically I'm gonna use my pinking shears because I'm trimming off my serging and I don't want it to unravel. So I am just gonna be cutting off my serging, which should be about three eighths of an inch like that. Okay, so now I've got my back piece, which is one large piece cut on a fold, and this will unravel a lot. So before I do anything, I'm gonna go and serge all the way around this piece. All right, so here 
is my sleeve shoulder thing. This center part here is for my back. So I'm going to go ahead and with my back surged all the way around it, got my center back marked right there. I've got a couple notches on the sides I can match up. I'm just going to place my center back where it belongs and hopefully everything will match up well. Um, I need to come down here, match up my notches, which are right about here, and the edge pieces. So let me get that pinned and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, I wanna show you something. So this is the back, this is that sleeve part. And it matches easily at the 5 8 inch mark, but in order to get it so it'll lay flat so I can stitch it well, I'm going to put a few clips up here inside of my stay tape area so that I can get it to flex because it's quite a bit of curve going on here. Okay, so now that I've made those little clips, this can lay nice and flat while it's on my sewing machine. Okay, but I just want to let you know it does seem to be matching up at that 5 8 inch point really well. So once I, I only have one side pinned on right now, once I pin the other side on, I will be sewing this whole thing at 5 8 of an inch. Then they want you to come back and do a second row of stitching in about an eighth of an inch um, inside of that. So closer to between 3 8 and half an inch for the second row. Okay, so this is it here, the back sewed on up here, looking pretty cool. Um, I just pressed the seam allowance up towards the upper part. Now I need to get my front pieces out because I'm going to need to sew those up here. So before I do that, just like I did for the back, I'm going to take each individual front piece and serge all the way around it. Now the way that they're going to be doing these side pockets, it's actually pretty um, intricate, but it's all done on the front piece. So I think that before I sew these front pieces onto that so that you know I have less to try to maneuver. I'm going to go ahead and get my side pockets set in here. So let me clear off some stuff and get my pocket pieces over here. Okay so first thing I punched out these two holes which I need to align my pockets and I am just going to transfer those markings over here. If I can find my pen. Hold on, let me look for it. I don't know where my pen went off to. I had to grab a new one out of the drawer. So somewhere in this room. But I'm going to mark where those two dots are and a little line right here where that notch is just so it's easier for me to see. And looking at the instructions, we're going to be... Um, here, here, this is where it starts up here. I need to do some reinforcement stitches at those circles because we're going to be clipping into them. So about an inch or so before, straight across to about an inch or so after um, on both of these, on both of my front pieces. Now I was over there and I don't think I mentioned that before I started to work on this, I did pre-wash and pre-dry um, all of my fabrics so that they are pre-shrunk. Um, and I just took a peek at my instructions and I actually need to do the same reinforcement type stitching here. So I don't even know if you can see those little, I have a little row of stitches going right there across where my dot is. I need to do those same type of things on the individual pocket pieces. So if I grab this pocket piece, there are corresponding dots. I'm just going to mark those. And again, about an inch or so before to about an inch or so after, just sew those straight um, to reinforce where those dots are because we're going to be clipping up to them. Okay, so now I'm going to clip up to my stitching line at that circle. I'm going to do that both places on all four of my pocket pieces, I believe. And up here on my bodice front, 
clipping straight up to, but not passing, that stitching line here and here. It blends so well. Okay, so now that that is done, let's go ahead and place the pocket. All right, so now I'm just matching up where my big clipped open areas are. And between these notches here, between this point, this point right here, and this point at the top of my clip right there, I'm gonna sew it straight across at 5 eighths of an inch on both of my front pieces. Okay, so I have it sewn on right here. And what I'm gonna do is come back inside, separating these seam allowances. I'm gonna, I need to trim my seam allowances, but I wanna do it so I don't cut this part out here. So I'm going to cut my tapestry, which is my garment fabric, to about a quarter inch pinked like that. And then for the other piece, which is the pocket, I am making this about an eighth of an inch longer. And again, pinking it. And that's going to grade out that seam so it shouldn't be so bulky on the outside edge. So um, I want to press this actually before I do too much more. Uh, it does not does not call for understitching. It wants you to top stitch it, but not understitch it. So, you know, there's that. So what I'm doing is folding out the seam allowance on the outside edge of that dot. Okay, in between the two dots where I sewed, folding it at that seam line that I've braided. I'm just gonna stick a pin in the middle here and then up above this dot, opening up these seam lines here so that um, I have the full edge of the fabric back out. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I'm gonna press it, and then they want me to come back and along here do a row of top stitching along this edge. Okay, so that is my row of top stitching. I can tell you my little Vincent is going over this four rows of upholstery, not upholstery, home deck fabric like it's nothing. Um, I love using these old machines and he is for sale. Just throwing it out there, he is for sale. Look in my description if you're interested, there'll be a link. But I like after I, I put together a machine um, to use it to make an entire garment because sometimes when you, you make a machine, um, it'll run great for just, you know, running little swatches of things, but it takes a while for you to be able to see, oh, okay, need this needs adjusted or that needs adjusted or something like that. So that's why I, I'm, I'm working through them and using them one at a time. So hope you don't mind, but that's what I'm doing here. So let me go ahead and get the other side front made up exactly like this and then we'll move on. Okay, I can't remember if I said to clip all of these. And if I did, don't do it. You're only clipping the front ones. You get the back of the pocket not clipped. Okay, so my circles are right here. I have not clipped to them. And that is just going to get set over the top of this. I need to pin it together here carefully. I have a very needy cat out there. You hear that? And I need to sew around the edge of just the pocket, not attached to my jacket, I believe. Yes. And um, again, they're asking you to double stitch it. What I am assuming is that all of this double stitch and trim is because they intended you to make this out of a knit fabric. And if you were sewing a knit fabric, um, that that would be a good technique. I don't think that that is necessary for me for my woven fabric right here. So I am just going to stitch these once from this outside edge here all the way around to this point up here on both of my front pieces. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the right side now. And this is still loose. And so what I'm gonna do is just come back and run a little row of stitching about a quarter inch in over 
the top and bottom areas just to keep these you know acting as one and when you sew the other piece of fabric on this is only at 5 8 7 inch so you're going to have to be really careful not to catch this when you're sewing so because of that I'm probably going to make my outside seam allowance smaller um, than normal I'll probably take five eighths up to this point and then go in maybe another eighth of an inch and then come back up here to five eighths and go up just to make sure I don't catch that I'll probably be able to feel it but you know I just want to make sure that this is not sewn closed but so first thing on each side I'm just going to baste both of these together okay so I got my other piece out here's my big sleeve that's the back I already sewed on I'm gonna grab one of my front pieces here so let's see if I can pin this on there's a notch part way up to match um, but I'm just gonna start by matching up the very top and very bottom and again if I need to come in here and clip some of this edge here so that it'll flex and curve better to match up with this outside curve I'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so now that I've got it all pinned on and by clipping it I can shape it easier I'm gonna do the same thing where I come and sew it at 5 8 7 inch and because I did the double stitching on my back I'm gonna go ahead and do that here too so sewing it once at 5 8 and then coming in about a quarter inch in and doing another row of stitching and I'm going to do this sewing both of my fronts to my sleeves okay so I've got my fronts sewed on and before I go any further what I'm going to come back and do is at a half inch seam allowance run a straight stitch all the way around my neck to stay stitch that to keep it from wanting to stretch out of position okay so for the collar piece you're supposed to cut two out one of your regular fabric and one of a contrast I have cut them both out of my velveteen it's softer I think that'll be fine um, there is a dot right here and on just one of my pieces hang on I need to kind of like we did with the pockets mark where that dot is on my collar piece here and then run a row of stay stitching about an inch wide on either side of the dot on both of these just on this one one side I'm not touching that one yet okay so with that done excessive threads there excessive pins I got stuff everywhere here oh my goodness okay so I need to clip up to that dot not clipping the stitching line just up to it okay clip over here and it wants you to trim it wants you to fold this up to five eighths of an inch and then trim to me I think it's going to be easier to trim it first so I'm just going to trim it with my pinking shears cutting it about halfway down the width of that seam allowance okay so now I'm going to go over to my ironing board and along where my stay stitching line is here my reinforcement line just go ahead and press this part up like that okay so this is the right side here and I am pinning my other one to it now remember in the instructions they wanted one of these to be interfaced and I am not doing that because my fabric is so substantial as it is so let me go ahead and pin okay so now I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way up over and back down at a 5 8 inch seam allowance okay so this just says you know turn and press but um, what I'm going to do is grade these so that one side is shorter than the other side in the seam allowance so that it's not you know so much bulk ending all at one spot and so I'm going to do that basically how I'm doing this and this is purely arbitrary at my point um, the side that has it folded up I am trimming that side shorter closer to about a quarter inch in some places less seam allowance and the next one I'm coming up you could pink it too that would be fine up here at the corners I'm taking 
bulk out of the corners like that and I'm going to trim this top piece the same. They are not calling for any understitching, any top stitching, nothing, none of that. And so I'm not going to. So let me go ahead and just turn this carefully. And you know what, I'm going to come back in here and make a few clips because this is a slightly curved um, collar. Hang on, my microphone just fell down. So with those clips right there, this top is going to fold easier. So I'm just going to go carefully iron this at my ironing board. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Now I need to come back and in the seam allowance area, I'm going to sew probably at about a quarter inch seam allowance, these two edges together up here and down here. Okay, so I've got my jacket laid up here and I have marked my center back point on my collar. And of course I know this is where the dots are. These little lines here are notches, okay? So I'm gonna start out by just matching it up. The opening here is face up. Pin that into place. The um, dot should match up where this dart line is on the top of the jacket. So I'm just going to put a little pin down there and a pin in that dart seam and angle this so that it lines up on the edge here and pin it into place. And come back here. This point here at the edge of the collar, let me show you, the final collar should be a smooth line from this point here all the way down the front facing. Okay, so that means at five eighths of an inch in, there should be a dot and there might have been, I might have erased it, um, but I need to make sure, okay, if that's five eighths of an inch in, that the edge of this collar is lined up at that point, okay? So I'm going to stick a pin here and then just average everything out in between. It looks like it's going to fit pretty well. Okay, I have it all pinned on. I am going to hand baste it in place because I have, this has a lot of nap to it and I don't want anything to shift while I'm stitching it. So I'm just going to be basting it with large stitches, probably about three eighths of an inch in. Um, I do have stay stitching here, which is keeping the jacket part from stretching out of shape. So I'm kind of anchoring my basting threads to that stay stitching area. Okay, so this is basted. This part is still free and I just need to set this aside for a minute because um, before I actually stitch that, I need to get my front facing piece pulled together. So let me go grab that. Okay, so I need to cut this because I cut it right next to the selvage, so I need to trim off all of this selvage fluffiness here and uh, finish off by serging this outside edge. So now that that serging is done, I'm going to come back and there's a couple dots on here I need to mark and I'm just going to go ahead and put a little line where this notch is. I need to do that for both of them and then come back in between these two dots, do a row of stay stitching. I'm going to do it at about half an inch um, between this dot and this dot. Okay, so I've got my stay stitching in there, if you can see. And now at the very top, they want us to fold it over at 5 eighths of an inch. And that dot is 5 eighths, so that gives you a good guide. And press it, fold it, and fold it over like that. Once it's pressed, they say come back in here and trim. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet, just because this, this might unravel. So I think I might not trim that. I think I might just leave it like this. Okay, so at this point then, with this folded under, I'm going to put right sides together, starting up here at the very top of my jacket. I can feel where that collar point is right along here. So I want to make sure that it's out of the way so I'm not going to uh, stitch it when I 
when I need to. So let me go ahead and pin this front piece all the way down. Okay, so now up here at the top where my folded edge is, that should line up with the edge of the seam allowance here. This is the collar piece where we folded under part of it. That should line up right there. Let me pin it in place. Got a lot of thicknesses here. This will be a good proving ground for little Vincent. Okay, so I've got this. I'm just gonna pin it and stitch this whole thing at 5 eighths of an inch. Um, you know what? I'm gonna come in here and clip a couple spots of that collar piece because it needs to curve and that this way with the clips it should be able to just overlap and lay more flat instead of see how all that is kind of ruffly. If I just, I'm not making my clips terribly deep but just enough that I can kind of stagger them and overlap them so it'll be flatter like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead sew this like I said at 5 eighths of an inch from this point to the collar, I mean to this point here, making sure I go past where this collar edge is and then straight down. Hello and welcome to the next day. So at this point I have my front facing sewn on and this is very very bulky so I've got a lot of trimming I want to do but before I trim I'm just going to tug my collar out and make sure everything looks good because if I need to adjust anything or if there's a pucker or something in there I'd rather know now before I start trimming and it all does look good so that's lovely so my fabric's a lot thicker than what the pattern is calling for so I'm going to be trimming quite a bit off um, the first one is the facing piece I'm just going to to grade this in different levels. So for the facing, I'm gonna trim it down to like a fat eighth of an inch. Then for the collar piece, I'm gonna come in here, make it about an eighth of an inch taller, like that. And then this piece here, which is the sleeve, and that's going to turn into the front up here. There's a little seam right there. I'm just going to trim off only the surging at the top. So I'm going to end up with it kind of staggered of three different levels. So let me go ahead and do that over here to this corner. And I'm actually going to, um, at this point, there's only two layers, but I am going to go ahead and, and trim the facing side coming down the front. I'm just going to trim this seam allowance basically in half and leave that one long. You know, that's a big stagger, so I think that that will look good. Okay, so I haven't actually flipped it. I've trimmed it, but I haven't actually finished pulling it, which I guess I could right now. Why not? What I need to do, though, is um, understitch this front edge. So I know I'm not going to be able to get all the way to the corner, but I'll get as close as I can. And what I'm going to do is push, I will iron it first, you know, I'm going to iron it, pushing the seam allowance towards the facing side like this, okay? And then once it's pressed, I'm going to come back and run a understitching row right here, about an eighth of an inch in on this side right about there, all the way up as high as I can get up into this corner here. I'm not, not totally sure how high I'll be able to get, but I'll get as close as I can to the top. Okay, so this is the side. I have it understitched. I pressed the front, you know, and so that's going to be a nice edge there. So now I need to finish up this whole neck issue and um, get my scissors. At this point where this folded edge is, I'm going to clip up in the seam allowance here. And that corresponds with where this opening is. And I'm also going to be clipping where it's easier to see my stitching line. I did not sew that stitching line. It's just basted together. Hmm. 
Okay, so before I do anything, can't believe I didn't sew it. What I need to do is come back in here and sew straight across. When I was sewing my facings on, I started here and went down and here and went down. Gotta sew this. So at, I'm going to kind of open this up here and at 5 8 7 inch just sew straight across inside of here first. Okay, so back over here now that this is actually sewn, which is important, at this edge I am clipping up to where that seam is I'm going through a lot of a lot of layers here. I got to tell you my little bitty machine that is a trooper. That is such a trooper. So I'm I'm impressed by his oomph to go through all of this. Never hesitating. Anyway, I've clipped it so that this neck can have a nice curve. A little black is left over from my basting there. So now I can pull my collar up tuck all of this stuff that I just clipped inside of that little flap okay and this I am going to stitch down by hand just whip stitch it in place um, this edge here kind of runs alongside where that dart is the dart is the shoulder seam so and when I whip stitch it I'm gonna be stitching this here just into the dart, you know, so that'll hold this part nice and flat. Let me stick another pin in here where I can tuck everything in. Here, come back over here, and the same thing, you know, I'm gonna clip some of this, of this corner out of here, because that's just big. That is just big. Okay, so on this side also, I should be able to pin this so it's gonna run down where that dart is and whip stitch this to the dart here and so let me just get a needle and thread it won't take long this is not a big area to stitch down all right so this is what it looks like right now um, i just have it pinned together under the arms and over here so it's kind of like bat winging out but that will fix but i like it i think it's pretty cool um and up in my collar I did not interface it and I'm using the softer fabric because you know as much as I love this tapestry part it is a little bit coarser so having the soft cotton velvet stuff against my neck will be nice and my fabric has enough oomph to it that I think that it's just going to stand up on its own but if I wanted to turn it down you know I could do that I could do that but I think it looks nicer popped up in the back you know and going for an 80s popped collar vibe here so really there's no front closure it just hangs and these sleeves if I pull this out you can see there's a lot of room under this arm so even though it's made for a stretch knit I don't I don't think I see any problem using a woven and a very dense woven at that so yeah um, I think my next step is to go ahead and do this seam and then work on hemming it and then I think we're gonna be done so yeah I like it okay so I am just gonna be matching these seams up and at this point I am going to be um, pressing when I get all this done I'm gonna be pressing my seam allowances towards the back just because of the way this pocket is um, you know, I don't think that we need that confusion of trying to split this open like that. I think pressing it towards the back will be fine. But when you sew and when I sew, I need to make sure I don't, I don't stitch where this pocket opening is. Well, here, this part right here. Um, I am just going to kind of make a little mark along the edge there on the side that I'm going to be looking at so I can have a, a gentle but firm reminder that it's there. So anyway, I'm just going to pin it, um, starting at the bottom, working all the way up, making sure this seam line matches up, and then come all the way down to the bottom of the sleeve. There is a notch right here that gets matched up, but it matches up very evenly. So let me get it all pinned, then I'm going to stitch it at 5 8 7 inch. And then just like the other seams, come back and do a second row of stitching, you know, somewhere between eighth and a quarter inch in from there. So I have two rows of stitching going down this whole edge. 
Okay, I wanted to show you one thing. After I got my side seam put in, I decided to come back and do a row of top stitching down the back side here. Um, I think that that's going to give more strength to this pocket, having an extra row of stitching here, tugging it in and down here, and it's just going to make that whole side seam lay a lot flatter. And that's what I want, especially because I have a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Okay. Okay, so from the inside, I got a couple different rows of stitching going on over here. It was very thick there, but you know, we got through it fine. On the outside, you probably can't see, I have a row of top stitching going there. And I think that that's going to be really nice to hold this seam nice and flat. Okay, so right now the only thing I have left to do is hem. So what I'm going to do is just at the cuff, a very basic hem, but I tried it on and I actually need it um, just about, uh, just over an inch hemmed up. So I'm going to need to clip some of this out or else my hem is just going to be insanely thick. So what I do is fold it up to the amount that I'm going to want my hem to be. I'm just going to lay it here on my grid so I can see, yeah, that's about an inch and a quarter. That's pretty good. And then I put a line up here where that point is. Okay. So now I can come back and trim out most of this bulk. I'll stop trimming about a quarter inch below where that mark is. So now when I go to fold it up, and I am just going to stitch this by hand so that my stitches don't really show up on the outside, but now there's not all that bulk in here, and so that's going to be a lot better. So that's going to be how I'm going to hem the cuffs, you know, just trimming out bulk and um, stitching it by hand. For the bottom, this is a slightly round-ish type bottom. It's got a curve to it and this is very very dense. So I'm going to fold my facing in so it's folded at that edge where I want it and let me pin this here really quick. The hem that I'm going to want on the bottom is um, I'm going to do the same inch and a quarter. So following my inch and a quarter here, my facing was slightly longer, so I'm just going to draw a line right here, okay? So I'll be doing this on the other side also, but before I get started with all of this, I'm going to stitch straight across here at that point, and that point is where I want the bottom of my hem to be over here, okay? So I'm going to do this on both of my front facing edges. Alrighty, so I stitched that part at the bottom, but I've also um, hemmed up my sleeves, and I think that that looks fine. So now coming back down to these bottom places here, I need to trim this, and I'm going to trim the facing part shorter. I'm giving myself like a fat quarter inch there. I'm going to come in here at a slight angle, this is the end of my facing. I'm going to bump in, you know, close to an inch here. Make a little slit up and grade this so it's, you know, a fat eighth of an inch um, farther out. I'm just going to come that corner a little bit bigger here. So now I should be able to turn this corner fairly easily. Again, I've got a lot of thickness going on here, but yeah, that worked really well. So um, I'm going to do the other side just like this and then go over to my ironing board, press these corners. You know what? I just changed my mind. I was looking at it and it seemed like a good idea, but I'm not too sure that lace is the best. Lace is so fine and delicate and this tapestry and velveteen are so, you know, big that I'm not sure that that's a good choice. So this is what I'm going to do, you know, shifting my mind on the fly here. I'm going to press these corners and then go ahead and turn up and press this edge all the way around, you know, not attaching it yet, but just pressing that edge down. Okay, so I've got my bottom edge pressed and I wanted to show you, I left this one open, I'm still going to do the same thing I did on the cuff where I marked where this top edge needs to line up 
and I'm going to trim up to, you know, about three eighths of an inch or so from that mark so that my hem is not nearly as bulky down here. And I am just going to machine stitch this. My stitches are basically invisible on this, so I don't see why I should have to hand stitch it. So I'm just going to run my stitching uh, just on inside or right underneath the surging line right here, uh, straight across. <laughs> this so I can see myself. There we go. I love it. I think it looks pretty darn sharp. It's very comfortable with the sleeves low like this. You know, it's very easy to put something on underneath it. And, you know, not having it buttoned is comfortable, but I think it's a really sharp design. I'm loving this. So I hope you do too. And so Lesson learned, don't be deterred from using your favorite fabric, even if it's not the one that's listed as a suggested one in the uh, pattern envelope. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I hope you like it. See you next time. Bye-bye. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see I'm living. My bucolic life. 